All right, potatoes, listen up. Today, we're graduating from crayon scribbles to stick figures. Hi, everybody. Walrus here from Walrus Street. Today, I'm bringing you part two of my stock chart reading for potatoes series. This series is geared at new investors who are just new to reading stock charts. If that's not you, you're probably going to find a lot of the content boring in here, but I'll try to keep it short, light, quick, and just to give you guys the essentials. Before we get started, if you are new to investing, take a look at my Robinhood and my Webull account links below. They're referral links, and if you sign up and fund your account, you'll get some free stocks, I'll get some free stocks, everybody wins. Let's get into it. So for the first video in the series, we talked about the 50 SMA. The 50 SMA is a really, really great indicator that almost all traders use. And I think it's a good starting point to learn about reading charts. Today, we're going to up the difficulty a little bit. We're going to talk about the long-term indicators like the 100 and the 200 day SMA. And we're also going to talk about some crossover signals where you use two SMAs at the same time to determine a price action. Just a quick review. What are SMAs? They're the simple moving averages of the stock's closing prices over a period of time. In the case of this video, we're going to be talking about 100 days or 200 days. How are they calculated? We're going to add each day's closing price for 100 or 200 closing days and then divide by 100 or 200. If you want more details on the math, go ahead and check out my 50-day SMA video. I break it down in a lot more detail. Nerd. Because we're averaging previous days, obviously SMAs are not predictive of the future. Instead, they're just backward looking. They're looking at what's already happened. Quick review of terms for our charts. This is just an imaginary SMA line. It doesn't matter 50, 100, 200, just the blue line is an SMA line. If the stock is trading in the green area above that line, the sentiment for the stock is bullish. If the stock is trading in the red area below the line, then the sentiment for that stock is bearish. Bullish means people are positive, they think the price is gonna rise. Bearish means they're negative, they think the price is going to decline. Couple other basic concept of SMAs. The SMAs are best thought of as buying or selling signals in strong, consistent markets. They're not very useful in choppy markets, especially the long-term SMAs. These indicators are most useful in consistent trends, like this trend from the bottom up to here, this trend from here to here, down, up. Those are where they're useful. Now these boxes, where it's really, really choppy and it's down and up and down and up, these would be considered choppy markets and you don't really want to use SMAs as your primary indicators there. They're not very reliable. Now this is because if you're in a choppy period and you've got price action moving up and down and up and down, it's probably going to be crossing the SMA frequently and it's going to be giving you false indicators to trade. It's going to be giving you false signals. Into the new stuff. SMAs are classified as short, mid, or long term. The longer the period of the SMA, SMA, the more impactful it is. We consider short-term SMAs to be about 10 to 20 days. Midterm would be the 30 and the 50. Those are really common ones. Long-term would be 100 to 200. When I say an SMA is more impactful if it's longer, what does that mean? It means the average carries more weight. Imagine you're walking down the road with a bucket and you pick up a pebble and you put the pebble in your bucket and you keep walking. You don't really feel the weight of the pebble. It's only a single pebble. Say you keep walking and you put 100 in your bucket. You start to notice the weight a little bit more. 200, you start to notice the weight even more. That's how the SMAs work. They allow you to feel the price movement more strongly on your chart. A single day is not going to impact a 200 day SMA. Just like once you already have 200 pebbles in your bucket, a single extra pebble, you're not really going to notice the extra weight. For these trading days, I find it's actually often helpful to conceptualize these numbers as months or percents of a year. The reason is a common time frame, like a month. Immediately you would think, oh, the 30 SMA, but that's wrong. A month is actually going to be your 20 SMA because it's 20 trading days, Monday to Friday, four weeks, there's your 20. 30 is actually going to be about a month and a half. So when we're talking about the long term SMAs, the 100 to 200, 100 days is going to be about 20 weeks. 200 days, that's going to be suddenly about 80% of a year. So I find it helpful to conceptualize these as a number of weeks weeks or months or a year. How do we trade these? On this picture right here, the red is going to be the 200 SMA and the blue is the 50 SMA. Notice the blue follows the price action more closely because the red is averaging back 200 days. When we're talking about trading crossovers, you're talking about the two lines crossing over each other. Imagine you're taking your untrained dog on a walk. 
on a leash and both of you are heading in the same direction but your dog is just oh, back and forth and back and forth in front of you that's kind of like a crossover on an sma chart you're walking consistently in one direction you're the 200 sma and your dog is going to be your 50 sma just back and forth and it's going to cross your path in the short and midterm this would be like using the 30 sma plus the 100 sma this combination of smas is going to be better for choppier markets if you're in a choppy market it's better to go with a shorter sma SMA. And you could even go shorter than that with like a 15 SMA and a 50 SMA. We use these for playing quarters or halves in stock trading. You see Q and H. Q is a quarter, so that's a three month period. Usually it has significance because a publicly traded company has to announce their financials every three months, every quarter. A half would then be six months, two quarters. Most of my trades personally are long term trades. Part of this is because I'm just not a very skilled trader for short term trades and I can understand long long-term trends better. Plus, it's a little bit safer. I prefer using the 50 and the 200 SMA together, just like on this chart. Also, if you use the website stockcharts.com and you put in a ticker of your choice, they will automatically give you a chart return with the 50 and the 200 plotted on it so you can see something just like this. Long-term trading pairs like the 50 and the 200 are better than the 30 and the 100 in longer trending markets. Basically, since March of 2009, we've been in a very protracted bull market. For the most part, this is where we get the meme, stonks only go up. It's been true for the last 11 years, for the most part, obviously with the exception of the pandemic drop, 2019 drop, we've had just a protracted bull market and these long indicators like the 50 and the 200 are really useful. Now we have two big signals when we're trading crossovers. The first one is the golden cross. Now the golden cross is when the short SMA, short time period, is going to cross above the long SMA, the long time period. Now here, the short is the 50, that's the blue line. The long is the red line, that's the 200. Now here at this yellow arrow, we can see the blue line crosses above the red line, which is a bullish signal. We expect the stock price to rise at this point. The opposite of a golden cross would be a death cross. This is when the shorter SMA crosses below the longer SMA. You can see the shorter SMA, the blue line, crossing beneath the red line. This is a bearish signal and you expect a price decline from this point. So what does this mean? What are the upsides and the downsides? So the upsides of using the crossover signals, they provide a psychological support or resistance, especially when you're using the 50 and the 200 together. The 50 and the 200 together are very commonly used by many traders. They all look at the same line and they can be psychological lines of support or resistance. They're used for signs of buying or selling. If your 50 crosses above the 200, most people think buy. If the 50 crosses below the 200, most people think sell. Now the downsides of using the crossover signals, it can create false signals, especially in choppy markets. Also, and this is the biggest downside, traders don't always respect the SMA. This is the Microsoft chart. You could see right here, the 50-day SMA is the blue line and look Look at all of these price jumps around the blue line. In the middle of the day, we've got price crossing it, price crossing it, price crossing it, cross, 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 the whole way down. The traders just don't give a sh about this. So if nobody is R-E-S-P-E-C-T-ing the SMA, it really doesn't mean a lot. Before you blindly follow the SMA or blindly follow a cross, take a look at the chart's history and see how the traders react when the price comes close to the SMA. Now you guys have a little better idea how to combine short and intermediate SMAs with long SMAs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more in this series and they will be getting a little more complex over time. I realize these first ones have been a little simple, but knowledge builds. Thanks a lot guys. See you again soon.